Let's start with uh, with LSU baseball. Uh, the, the good news first, okay? Uh, Tigers split a pair with South Carolina after losing the first game and being down four runs in the eighth inning of the second game <clears throat> to a team that is in the top five in the country and is off to a, a terrific start playing at home. Going into the eighth inning of uh, Friday's game, which ended up being an afternoon game, there was reasonable cause for a, a little bit of concern. First of all, LSU had been beaten in the game against Tennessee in the final game of the series. They got thumped pretty good there. They won the game against Nichols, but didn't really get what they wanted out of it from a pitching standpoint from either Thatcher Hurd or Christian Little. And then Thursday night's game got <clears throat> rain delayed, which caused them to lose Paul Skeens after three innings. Losing Paul Skeens after three innings is going to be a major problem for this club if it ever happens again, and I'll explain why in a little bit, although it's pretty obvious that the guy's probably the best pitcher in the country right now, so it's it's easy enough, but it goes a little bit deeper than that. Then you get into Friday's game, which is moved up, and if you, you don't have to be a great meteorologist to know that there's a pretty good chance it's the only game that you're going to get in that day and probably for the rest of the weekend. So you are going, uh, we use the poker term, probably all in here. And if you're down four runs after you go all in, you've used Ty Floyd, your next best pitcher, uh, your next best starting pitcher, and his control was a mess. He walked four and hit three. And then you go to Garrett Edwards, who has been your best reliever, and he goes out with a pretty scary-looking arm injury. And then you go to Griffin Herring, the precocious freshman who has really done a nice job for you and you get to the eighth inning and you're still down four runs this is not the great place to be so in walks uh <clears throat> in walks gavin dugas with uh you know his uh you know white horse and knight in shining armor and hits the grand slam for you you get uh, you get a walk a wild pitch a walk a single and a grand slam and you you get uh, you get home with the win because of that, uh, you get the run in the ninth uh, as well, obviously, with the Cade Beloso single. So you save an awful lot of bad feelings. Now, let me be clear. LSU loses that game to South Carolina. The third game gets rained out. They're coming home. They're still a top-five team. It's not the end of the world, okay? But you're not feeling real good about it coming off the Tennessee loss, coming off the first South Carolina loss. It's – not a season saver by any any stretch because the season didn't need to be saved. But it does a whole lot for morale when you're able to come back from down four runs against a team of the caliber of South Carolina, get a clutch hit from one of your leaders, and then the best news of the weekend, in my opinion, happened. I know Gavin Dugas can hit home runs. I've seen him do it uh, for, you know, the better part of four years at LSU. I know he can hit in big spots. I've seen him in super regionals. I've seen him in the postseason. I've seen him in really clutch spots. But I didn't know if Gavin Guidry could go in and save a game on the road with the series hanging in the balance against a top five team. See, I've never seen him pitch in quite such close quarters. Gavin Guidry, when he was recruited out of Barb, I figured would be a middle infielder, and he still might be. But they listed him as a pitcher as well, and I thought, well, this will be an opportunity for him to be on the middle infield, and if the opportunity presents itself for him to pitch, maybe that'll happen. If you had asked me in October what I thought the chances were of his usage, I would have said about 90% infield and 10% pitching. Well, that ratio hasn't changed because I wouldn't pitch him 90% of the time and play him on the infield 10% of the time. I would pitch him 100% of the time now because they need him. So for Gavin Guidry to go in and get three strikeouts and hold the rope in the bottom of the eighth inning where South Carolina doesn't score, and then you send a one-run lead to the bottom of the ninth inning, and here comes Carolina again, and you got to go out there and you got to hold a one run lead to tie the series for a freshman who, to that point, had pitched one inning of Southeastern Conference baseball. 
That was the best news of the weekend. There's no question that LSU is in a little bit of a depth. I almost said crisis. A little bit of a depth uh, pickle at this point because I don't want to say crisis. I don't think this is crisis at all. But they are without uh, Chase Shores right now. And as optimistic as I want to be, there's a pretty good chance that they're going to be without Chase Shores the rest of the year. Is that going to happen? I don't know. They're still waiting on another opinion, but nothing I hear sounds great. I don't know how long they're going to be without Garrett Edwards. The report on him was much more encouraging than what I'm sure a lot of people looked at if you're watching the game on Friday. You looked at him, you saw the nature of that injury, and you probably, if you were thinking along with what I was thinking along, went, oh bleep, that doesn't look good. So if you are LSU and you are past skeins on a weekend, okay, LSU's SEC ERA right now with Paul Skeens is 6.34. Without Skeens, it's 7.91. We say, yeah, you take the best pitcher out, of course the ERA is going to go up. That does it for every team. What I'm telling you is that's LSU once Skeens exits the game on Friday nights. Once you get to the seventh inning, after that, over the last 10 games, 11 games now, your SEC ERA is approaching eight. You remove Shores from that as well, it goes up over eight. And if you remove Edwards from that, it goes over nine. Why am I telling you this? Because there's a decent chance that from the eighth inning on in Southeastern Conference Series for the immediate future, you're going to be without those three pitchers. They've been your best three guys. Now, here's the good news. Griffin Herring now has seven innings of SEC work. That's a decent sample size for 11 games for a freshman that we didn't expect to have this much of a role at this point. In seven innings, he's given up seven base runners in one run. Well, that's great. Gavin Guidry has thrown now two and two-thirds innings in Southeastern Conference play. He's given up two base runners and no earned runs. Next man up is one of the most overused and I think ridiculous cliches in sports. Why do I think it's ridiculous? Well, next man up, he's got he's to step in. Well, for every time Jeff Hostetler steps in for Phil Sims or Kurt Warner steps in for Trent Green, Jameis Winston steps in for Drew Brees or you know uh, Andy Dalton steps in for Drew Brees and it ain't nearly as good. The starters are the starters for a reason. But sometimes uh, you do get the next guy up, and the next guy up can really play. LSU right now has got to hope that Griffin Herring and Gavin Guidry can hold up with the starts that they've gotten off to in Southeastern Conference play because they're going to need them. Now let's go back to, to Thursday night where Jay Johnson took an awful lot of heat for after the rain delay going in with Sam Dutton. Let's talk. He's down two runs. He's in the in the fourth inning. What are, what are his options at that point? He could have gone with Garrett Edwards. Garrett Edwards at that point was his best available option. But do you want to put Garrett Edwards in when you are down two runs? This means if you play him straight up the rest of the way, you're without Skeens and you're without Edwards, and now you've lost the first game. I understand why you know you're not talking about punting on the game, but at that stage, do you really want to put your best guy in? You don't have Shores available to you. Ackenhausen is coming off of an injury. Her, Little is going to pitch the third game, which never ends up happening, and Hurd had pitched in the midweek and not pitched well. So what are your other options? You could have gone to Riley Cooper. His ERA in league play is eight. So they went with Dutton, who started a half a dozen games in league play a year ago and you know, it kind of tried to piece it together. It didn't work. It did work as far as what they had available to them on Friday to even the series. Now, with all of that being said, all of the polls that are out today still have LSU as the number one team in the country. Unanimous. They have been from the beginning. And they've still got Paul Skeens, and they've still got Dylan Cruz, and they've still got Tommy White, and they've still got Gavin Dugas, and this is still a team that can just bludgeon you with the bats. They're really, really good. Furthermore, they have played Arkansas already and won that series. Arkansas is in first place in the SEC West by half a game because LSU 
did has not played them yet. They have already split a series on the road at South Carolina, who is nine and two and in second place in the SEC East. They have already won a series against Tennessee, who is five and seven in the league, but they're twenty two and ten overall, and nobody is going to be surprised. We're talking about a team with a great chance to still host a regional, and again, uh, and a, a road series win against Texas A and M, who is five and seven in the league, but also. Uh, has a very high top 20 RPI. This weekend, you'll play Kentucky, who is 9-3 in the league, but just lost two out of three to last place. Georgia might be a little bit, just a little bit overrated. Their RPI is number one in the country, but that includes a sweep against Indiana State, a sweep against Elon, who both have surprisingly high RPIs, but are not Southeastern Conference teams. I think we know that. Once you get past that, in the second half of the season, LSU does not play a team that currently has a winning record in the Southeastern Conference. So, not that it is going to be easy, but it will be lighter than the first half. You're half a game out of first place in the SEC West. You're number one in the country. You're number four, uh, five in the RPI, four in the RPIs. Um, everything's okay. They're hoping for good news from Garrett Edwards. But... What I took out of these two games is Griffin Herring and Gavin Guidry stepped up when LSU really, really, really needed them. They will really, really, really need them again the rest of the season. So that's where we're at. 